So I want to do a quick video for you about Kintiki, which is an open source operating system that provides a full application suite and TCP IP stack. The entire Kintiki package is very small in size, and so it's mostly used on 8-bit computers like the Commodore 64, Atari 8-bit line, and the Apple II. I'm using this on a 2GS, so it's obviously not taking advantage of the hardware capabilities, although it does have a drop-down interface. Ooh, drop-down menus. If you go to the directory, you'll see a large selection of applications and items you can use. The first time you use Kintiki, you'll want to go to Configuration and set up stuff like your screensaver and which slot your Ethernet card is in and your IP address and other network values. But rather than manually entering them, you can actually just run a program, the DHCP program. And from there, you can actually just request that information and the system will provide that for you. And once the system has those numbers, you're good to go. So let's go browse the interwebs. Now where to go? How about vintagecomputer.com? Somewhere I go just about every day. This is definitely a place you want to go if you're a fan of vintage computers, even the most obscure ones. If it exists, there's going to be information about it here. And this place also has really cool members, and so if you're having an issue repairing your computer, uh, these guys will definitely help you out. All right, so let's check out some of the features of this state-of-the-art browser. you got a back button, a down button for scrolling, a stop and go button. I mean, what else could you possibly want in your browser? All right, so let's venture somewhere else where people might be a little bit more familiar with the website, like YouTube. And I'll go to my channel. Now, I know this may come as a shock, but it doesn't look like Kentucky's web browser supports Flash. Dang it. Very disappointing. But we can still read stuff. Look at that. Over 200 subscribers. You guys rock, seriously. All right, so let's close this, and let me show you some other applications. So another cool feature of Kentucky is that it has its own IRC client, which is, again, something that I use just about every day. And so let me go to Slashnet, which is the server that hosts Vintage Computer's channel. Yes, VintageComputer.com actually has its own IRC channel. And actually, we need more members because there's not a lot of people that go to this or know about it. And so let me just log in and visit the channel. And the channel name is actually just VC. And there you can see it lists everybody that's in the room. So I'll just send a quick message to everybody. And I doubt they're going to respond. It's pretty early right now, and I think most of these people are still asleep. A lot of them just stay connected all through the night. But I can respond to myself because I'm actually connected with my laptop to the same channel. And there I am, Tanru Nomad. So pretty cool stuff. Oh, actually, somebody is awake. So yeah, very cool to be able to use IRC on an Apple II. And I believe Kentucky will work on most Apple IIs, including the II Plus from 1979. I'm using an Ethernet card right now to connect to my wireless router, but I do actually have to have the physical cable there because wireless capability hasn't yet been developed for the Apple II. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that day will come. All right, so there's a few other applications that I think are worth noting like accessing an FTP server, ability to download files, and email capability, although you can only send email and not receive it. But anyways, I just wanted to give you a quick demo of Kentucky, so thank you for watching.